This is KGW News at Sunrise. Now at six, for the first time in history, women are in the majority in Oregon state legislature. Despite that power, a new investigation shows the Capitol is a hostile work environment. And making his case for the border wall on day 18 of the government shutdown, President Trump will deliver his first primetime address from the Oval Office tonight. This comes as he threatens to declare a national emergency to pay for the wall. The Clemson Tigers are kings of the college football world. They beat Alabama last night for their second national championship in the last three years. Plus, we will take you to this year's Consumer Electronics Show from an AI robot butler to a machine that irons and <laughs> folds your clothes. Yes, please. Nice. We're getting a look at the future of tech. And are you ready to plan your next vacation? Yes. Well, this could be a great year to save some money on your getaway. Because right now, in 2019, is the golden age of cheap flights. Coming up in our Good to Know segment, we are looking at the top travel trends of the new year. Well, if you are getting started on your commute this morning, you are going to encounter a lot of delays. We are heavy in Vancouver from Main Street all the way down to the Interstate Bridge. Some slowing on Highway 26 inbound as you approach the zoo. And we're also seeing some slowing on the Banfield, really starting at about the Hollywood District. Stop and go all the way to the I-5 split. Okay, Lacey, thank you. Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us on a Tuesday. You know, we have uh, more school delays again today to tell you about. These are all happening out in the gorge. Yeah, we can show you right now. There you see the South Wasco County, Dufer, and the Sherman County School District. All three are on a two hour delay right now. We're going to update this list as we get more. Of course, they're also scrolling there at the bottom of your screen, along with other headlines of the day. All right, at least the ice isn't here this morning. Correct. It looks like, by the way, um, most of these delays are because of winter weather up above 1,000 feet. Dufer was one of the school districts yep. delayed, yes. right? 32 degrees at 1,300 feet. Even Parkdale, though, in the Hood River Valley at 1,400 feet, they're still 38 degrees. Okay. We have Hood River at 38 down low in the city this morning. The Dow's down low along the Columbia River at 36. So if you are traveling in the gorge, generally things are fine. Uh, except for the upper elevations where we have the snow concerns. Here you can see the raindrops in the Wells Fargo lens. It's raining steadily all over the west side. 43 degrees at 8 o'clock when the kids get out the door to head to school. They're going to want rain gear. By lunchtime, though, and when they come home, it could be far more dry than wet. Just some scattered showers and temperatures in the 40s. East winds are blowing. How wet is it? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it's raining all over the place. That will start to break up mid-morning. Thank you, Rod. We start with breaking news at 6.02. Take a look at your screen here. This tractor was used to destroy an ATM and steal the cash inside. This is at the Wells Fargo at Northeast Cornell Road and Butler Street near the Orenco Station in Hillsboro. Police say there were two suspects and they got away in a U-Haul. We don't know yet where they got that U-Haul, but it was later found sitting in a parking lot about a mile and a half away. Officers say they don't know how much money the pair got away with. We want to get now to our top story this morning. For the first time in Oregon history, a majority of elected executive offices are now held by women. Just yesterday, a longtime state representative was sworn into a new position. So at the top of her to-do list is fighting sexual harassment at the Oregon State Capitol. Christine Pitawanich is live with us in studio this morning to talk about this. Christine, this is a big issue right now in Salem. Good morning, Drew Ashley. Yeah, the issue was detailed in a bombshell investigation out of the Bureau of Labor and Industries released last week, it found sexual harassment is prevalent at the state capitol. KGW has been reporting on some of the accusations. Listen to what one accused senator had to say last year when we confronted him with the allegations and what his accuser had to say about it. Several women have said that you made them uncomfortable. You continued to harass them. Uh, no comment. This is supposed to be a harassment free workplace. It is supposed to be safe for everyone. And that's what longtime state representative Val Hoyle hopes to do. She was sworn in as the new commissioner for the Bureau of Labor and Industries yesterday. Hoyle talked about not being given equal pay at past jobs and being harassed herself as a state representative. She says she wants to figure out what can be done to make sure the legislature is a safe place to work. I came in in 2009 and it was it was a different time. I was told who not to get into an elevator with as if it was my responsibility to make sure that somebody didn't harass me, you know, and so um, and I have seen that culture shift um, considerably in that someone wouldn't be told that now. And I think that that's important. Can we do better? Absolutely. 
This morning, Hoyle is expected to formulate a plan on how to address the sexual harassment issues detailed in the recent report. In addition, she says she wants to take on the issue of fair pay. Back to you. Thank you very much, Christine. All right, the time now is 6.04. Partial government shutdown is now in day 18. It makes it the second longest in U.S. history. So tonight, President Trump will address the country from the Oval Office, and he'll try to convince Americans to support his idea of a border wall. The president is now threatening to declare a national emergency to get money for the wall. So get out your phones this morning because we want to hear from you. Do you think the president should declare a national emergency to pay for that border wall? The president is asking for $5.6 billion. Democrats say they're not going to give it to him. And the Senate Republican leadership won't vote on a budget the president won't sign. The partial shutdown is affecting about 800,000 federal employees who are either not working or working without pay. Again, we'd love to hear from you this morning. Do you think President Trump should declare a national emergency to pay for the border wall? You can let us know right now. You can see some people already weighing in the majority to this point saying absolutely no. But again, let us hear from you. Go to KGW.com slash vote or click on the vote now tab in our KGW News app. You know, one of the businesses impacted by the government shutdown is alcohol or industries rather. We are talking about both alcohol production and sales. So to ship beer across state lines, breweries need federal approval for new beer labels. Well, that's all on hold right now because of the shutdown. The office that handles that process is closed. Portland's Ecliptic Brewing had to put two of its new brews on hold because it can't get label approval. We have two projects. They're supposed to come out early February. They're both kind of in limbo right now because we don't have label approval and we won't until they open. And um, that's gonna keep us from releasing the beer out of state. Label approval usually only takes about a week, but there is already an estimated 45 day backup at this point because of the shutdown. Add, and to that backup will only get longer as the shutdown continues. Well, the Today Show is going to have more on this shutdown coming up at 7 o'clock, including a sit-down interview with Vice President Mike Pence. Again, that's coming up right after sunrise. It is 6.06. .06, time for a look at some of the other headlines making news in your morning rush. A Tennessee woman has been granted clemency after facing life in prison for murder. Sintoya Brown admitted killing Johnny Allen in 2004 when she was just 16, claiming that she was forced into prostitution and shot him in self-defense. She was tried as an adult and sentenced to life in prison. Now the Tennessee governor calls her punishment too harsh and granted Brown full clemency. He cited her extraordinary steps at rehabilitation. She'll be released on parole in August after serving 15 years. Actor Kevin Spacey pleaded not guilty Monday in his first court appearance. He faces a felony charge of indecent assault and battery, accused of groping an 18-year-old man at a bar in 2016. If he's convicted, he faces up to five years in prison. Comedian Kevin Hart is issuing yet another apology to the LGBTQ community for his homophobic tweets and comments in the past. This comes just a month after the controversy forced him to step down as host of the Oscars. Along with Hart's apology, he promises to remove material from his comedy act that may be offensive to the LGBTQ community. An oil tanker caught fire off the coast of Hong Kong this morning, killing one person. More than 20 crew members were rescued. Witnesses say the blast was strong enough to shake windows several miles away. Ship tracking data shows the tanker had 6,000 tons of gasoline on board, but most of it had already been delivered. And for the second time in three years, the Clemson Tigers have beaten Alabama in the college football national championship game. Final score, 44 to 16. Clemson finished with a perfect season. And that's your Morning Rush. From the Morning Rush, we go to the Morning Talker. Ashley, I am confident that your uh, twins yeah. do not have cell phones yet. Not for a good long while. <laughs> uh, my boys do not have cell phones yet either. Good. They're in fifth grade. That's awesome. They're trying to convince us that they are in the minority in their classroom. I'm trying to convince them that I don't care. Because <laughs> <laughs> you pay for it, so. Yeah, but apparently uh, there is a problem amongst parents and kids who do have cell phones in terms of kids replying to their parents' texts. Okay. There is an app for that, by the way. Yeah, so they don't reply, I guess, is the problem. Right. So this app locks your child's phone 
phone, even sets off an alarm until they respond to you. The website Pure Wow interviewed the dad who created it. He says uh, he made the app so kids can't ignore their worried parents. <laughs> it's free to download on Google Play. It's only for Android phones right now, but an iPhone version is coming soon. Parents and their kids, though, they both have to install the app for it to work. Did we say the name of it? What is it? Reply ASAP. Yeah. Uh, I have a cheaper piece of technology. It's called the Takeaway Phone <laughs> App. High five uh, me, brother. I'm, I love I'm that. I'm paying for the phone and you're not responding to yeah. my texts. I'll take that, please. Mm -hmm. I yep. think that's a good way to, chew, um, to what do I want to say, teach consequences. Yeah. Yeah. You could not answer me, but you will not have your phone. Done. Done and done. Done and done. <laughs> one and one equals two. You know who always gets back to me? My daughter, who's in sixth grade. You know who doesn't? Your, your wife. wife. My wife. <laughs> so, Punisher, Rod. <laughs> Maybe I need to get that app for, you know, not my daughter.